this recording. Here we go. Sharing screen. <laughs> okay. Courtney, I'm going to mute you just because I'm going to do a lot of talking probably. But if you have any questions or anything, pause me or unmute yourself and just pause me and you can ask or a uh, question and answer at the end too, okay? That's fine. My boys are both up. so <laughs> That's totally fine. I'm the same way on most calls that I'm on. So you are, you are just fine. But I'm going to mute you and I will get us started. There we go. Okay. All right. So tonight's call, agenda for tonight, um, welcome and prayer is up first. And then we're going to do announcements. And then I have a training, building your business through attraction marketing and how we can apply that. Um, and then question and answer time if you have any questions. Um, I know that, Courtney, I think you're going to be the only one on live is what I'm thinking. Um, some others may hop on later, but thankfully we'll have a recording for others. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get us started with a prayer. Lord, I thank you for this team of awesome people and thank you for um, bringing us all together in this typically for most of us as we share unexpected way. And I just thank you, Lord, for the call um, that I personally feel to each of these people, um, to each of the people in my challenge groups. I thank you for putting this purpose on my heart and just pray that you would continue to bless our businesses, uh, bless our outreach and bless our impact as we strive to help people better their lives through their health. Um, please use this call tonight to just teach us something new so that we can continue growing and moving forward in our businesses. Lift this up in your name. Amen. All right, so on to announcements. Oops, there we go. Um, okay, so announcements. If you were not on National Makeup Call on Monday or missed my announcement, um, they shared that the All Access Pass has been extended. Um, so it, they were giving it kind of a trial period to see how it went these first two months of the year. And obviously it has gone over really well. So All Access Pass is actually going to be extended until further notice, which is awesome because um, it's truly the best deal that we have ever had. Um, and then the thing that they are changing with it, though, it won't be three Success Club points starting in March. It'll go back to the normal Challenge Pack Success Club point of two. Um, so that starts in March. And then another change starting in March is that Shakeology HD, which I don't know if you guys are like me, I hardly ever just sell Shakeology by itself. So <laughs> it wasn't something that I was too crazy excited about because I'm all about the Challenge Packs. But um, if you are somebody that utilizes that or has somebody that just went Shakeology, um, you will be awarded two Success Club points for Shakeology HD orders starting in March as well. Um, national Wake Up Call from this week. Um, I, I know I always say listen to the National Wake Up Calls. This one was so phenomenal, and it was the first one that they've ever done like this. I mean, you guys saw, I went live. I was so pumped about just hearing how these coaches that had been in the business for six to nine months, um, the type of success that they had had, and just their sharing their tips of how they made that happen. Um, it was wonderful. So if you have not listened back on that, get in your coach online office and listen back. Um, if you don't know, national wake up calls for like the last two years are archived in our online office. So there's always national wake up calls you can go back to and listen back on. But I think that this one is incredible and you need to make sure you listen back to it. Okay. Um, I'm going to be doing this throughout the call. I still am scratchy and coffee. So, <laughs> okay. Next announcement. I just want to, I'm going to hit on this, you know, every few calls or so making sure everybody knows summit. Um, summit is, it seems far away, but it's really right around the corner. My husband and I have been talking through our plan for it. 
um, because we will have a three week old at that point. <laughs> and I am adamant that I'm going to get to summit. I've talked with Melissa and Victoria and Cami and Brooke and, um, they, everybody's saying we can make it happen. So I am going to be there whether my husband is or not. He's still kind of figuring that out. Um, but our team is going to have a place there. Um, you are going to have to get your ticket though. If you don't have it already, it's really, 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 no matter like where you're at in this business, even if you're brand new and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. It is one of the coolest things that you could ever go to. Um, if you've enjoyed your challenge group, um, if you've just enjoyed the atmosphere of our teams, that kind of encouragement and positive atmosphere, it is all of these coaches coming together and spending three days together. We get to do live workouts um, with actual trainers, um, you know, live with us. They have one super workout where all of the trainers do it and we take over all of the streets downtown and we work out together. Um, and then it's training time, just, you know, it's business applicable training. But as I've shared everything in this business that I have learned, um, is stuff that can improve our lives in general, because it's just mainly about living your life well and more intentionally. <clears throat> so this training, um, I mean, it's just incredible. I went for the first time last year and I will never miss it. Like I'm going to bring my three week old. So, <laughs> um, if you do not have your ticket, get on the Beachbody website, get your ticket and make plans to be in new Orleans with us. Um, it's July 13th through the 15th and summit is an annual event happens every summer. So I cannot, um, I truly cannot talk it up enough. It's a wonderful event. It's wonderful time together. Um, just it's something that you do not want to miss if you're really wanting to grow your business or if you're just wanting to better your health journey and your, your own personal walk in life. So, um, important to be there if you can make it happen and by all means make it happen because it's awesome. Okay. Um, a few little announcements, shout outs. Um, I wanted to give Shannon York a big whoop whoop because she has already hit success club for the month. Very good job, Shannon. I know she's been working really hard. Um, and then I wanted to give a shout out to Lois, Tammy, Caitlin, Jordan, and Jocelyn, because you guys are all on the board for Success Club this month. So I know you are going to reach Success Club. Uh, but good job, you guys, for making your way onto the Success Club board. All right. Next up, like I shared, training for tonight. Um, we are talking about attraction marketing. And um, I, uh, I did DECA, uh, if you don't know what that is, like a business entrepreneurship group in high school. I did that way back when, but other than that, I have no like business experience whatsoever. So when I first heard about attraction marketing, I was like, hmm, I mean, I can deduce what it means, what it is, um, just from the few keywords there, but it, um, it's truly the cornerstone of how we do marketing as coaches. Um, and I just wanted to kind of touch on that, break it down for you so that you understand um, just how we as coaches market and recruit not only um, coaches, but even just challengers for our challenge groups. This is, this is the way that we do it. So I wanna break that down for you guys tonight. Um, I know that a majority of the people on our team are moms. So I wanted to kind of relate it to that for you just to kick this off. So attraction marketing, it's kind of like being a mom. Um, as moms, we have to lead by example, right? As coaches, we have to lead by example. Um, as moms, we have to show up every day. Uh, there's no vacation days, right? <laughs> I know like personally from my last few months of being sick, you don't have sick days as moms. And the same kind of thing goes with our coaching journeys. Um, we don't just check out as moms, right? Like you don't have days where you just can't show up. Um, the same kind of thing happens with our coaching businesses. Yes, there are so many perks to it. Like now that I am a stay-at-home work at home mom, 
Um, I have the opportunity to make my own schedule and I have a lot of freedom and flexibility with that. But I still, even on vacations, like where I'm traveling or when we're actually on vacation, um, I don't just check out on those days. I still am running my challenge groups. I still, um, I still am posting, you know, being present on social media. It's important to be sharing your journey every step of the way. So um, it's different than corporate America, right? Just like being a mom, you just don't have those days off. Same kind of thing goes with coaching. If we, if we don't show up, our businesses aren't going to succeed. We have to share that journey. Um, and then finally, um, <laughs> this is an area so many of us are working on, but typically as a mom, it's really important to be organized, right? Some of us are better at that than others. I am a work in progress. I'm obsessed with organization, but I'm still not very organized at um, all the mom things in my life. So, uh, but with your business, the same kind of thing. The more organized you are, the more systems you have in place, um, the more tracking that you do with your business, um, the more scheduled that you are with your days and your time, the more success you will have with your business. Organization is definitely key. So a lot of these pieces here have to do with attraction marketing. So if you're figuring out this mom thing, like I still am three and a half years in, um, it, it's something that you can figure out too. Attraction marketing is something that you can figure out. Um, before I actually like dive into more of what attraction marketing is, I wanted to make this very clear. As always, what I always talk about with you guys, first, first things first, right? None of this attraction marketing stuff matters unless you have the vital behaviors down and you're tracking your bat consistently. Okay, so let me review that for you. I know we have some newer coaches. I want to make sure that you get into your heads those key things that have to be your foundation before you can even take other parts of this on. So vital behaviors. There's four of them. We have being a product of the product. You have to be walking that walk, you know, leading by example. Um, personal development. There's no way that you are going to be in the right mindset to continue this journey and to guide others and walk with them and lead a team and do trainings and eat. all this stuff is not possible unless you are working on yourself personally. So personal development. Third thing, you have to be inviting. And that is not just, you know, like publicly putting out on your Facebook profile an invite. We do that every now and then, right? Like I try to do that once a week, but um, that doesn't count as my invites. Invites are in private messages and it's something that you have to be doing consistently on a daily basis. Um, fourth thing is recognition. Making sure that you are cheering people on, on your team, in your challenge groups, letting people see that success comes from what we do. And just, you know, giving people on your team and in your groups a pat on the back because they deserve that kind of recognition for hard work that they're putting in. So those vital behaviors are key. And the other piece of this is tracking. Working from a list every day, your business activity tracker. I've shared mine with you guys a whole bunch. Da -da -da. I always have my list I work from, and then I transfer it into, I like pen and paper systems. So I track it all um, on here weekly, and then I put it into my binder uh, at the end of the week and start this back over so that I can track each week throughout the year and always have um, the opportunity to look back and see who I have talked with, who I have worked on building relationship with, who I've gotten to the point where I felt comfortable inviting them, um, who I have really spent time building relationships with in our challenge groups that I think would make good coaches down the road. Um, it's just important to track those things. And as we learn in one of my favorite books, Compound Effect, Things that are important to you, if you want to improve upon them, you track them. And I know that for many of you, tracking is challenging and it's something that's not a natural thing that comes to you. 
Um, but it is something that we have to figure out and have to be able to do to be successful with a business. I mean, this is a business and if we aren't organized in our businesses, they're not going to gain any traction. They're not going to go anywhere. So tracking those key things every day. And then like I've shared with you guys on my tracker, I put other things that are important to me that I want to do on a daily basis so that I'm personally growing in those areas that are important to me. So making sure before all of this attraction marketing talk that you have those two key areas down and you're doing them with consistency until you have that down, your business will not grow. Um, even if you did it with consistency for six months and then you dropped off, it's going to be like starting over again until you get that consistency piece going again. It's really, really important to have the, that foundation there first. Okay, so now that we've established that, as I always tell you guys, right? You're probably like, you're beating a dead horse, Christy. Uh, but it's the truth. That's what you have to have for foundation. But now that we have that just talked over again, moving on to attraction marketing focus, um, the big key piece of attraction marketing you have to work on you, okay? First and foremost, one of the things that I adore about being a part of Beachbody is that that is one of the things that is our vital behavior, right? Product of the product, personal development. Those key areas uh, are so, 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 so important because if we are not working on ourselves, uh, there's no way that we're going to attract people to what we're doing. We have to be proof that, um, that what we have to offer is legitimate, is um, full of integrity, and that we're resilient in that. Um, we're not just something that, you know, we're going to dabble in for a little bit and then, you know, move on once the tide flows by. Um, working on you is key. <clears throat> and then the second piece of that that attraction piece that comes in, um, you have to share that, you know, those areas where you're growing, the areas where you're working on you, you have to share that. Um, I, hmm, how do I say this? I think that one of the things that I see some coaches do really, really well, and maybe sometimes some coaches not do very well is that um, they just do not allow the working on themselves piece to be shown through they just come into this with that like this is me this is what you get and you know just blast whatever that is out on their social media and it honestly turns people off um, to see somebody who seems so set in their ways and so certain of where they are at um, but not open to changing and bettering themselves. Um, people need to see that growth in you and need to see um, that you are truly on a path to bettering yourselves um, to be attracted to what we are doing. So sharing that and learning how to share that is incredibly important. Um, I don't, I, I mean, you guys know, we, we see on social media all the time, people use it as a platform for negativity most of the time, right? Um, that's one of the most common things that we see on Facebook, especially right now, like political opinions and um, just negativity about how our days are going. And um, I, I think that there is something good to be said about being honest, right? Like, we don't, as coaches, just sugarcoat everything. We're honest about our lives, but um, but if we constantly are showing up with a negative voice, um, people are not going to want to see that. So they need to see those positive aspects of our lives growing and that we're sharing that. Let me move on. Uh, so why is improving yourself important? Uh, people, like I'm, like I'm saying, this is basically what I was talking through. Uh, people are not going to be attracted to what we have to offer unless we are truly growing and bettering ourselves 
people want to jump on board the train of somebody who is bettering their life on a daily basis or, you know, not necessarily daily, but in an overall spectrum, right? So you have to be constantly working on improving yourself. Um, but just a personal example. I have always tended to be, and I share this, like I share this openly on my Facebook. Um, I've always been somebody who struggled with that inner voice, right? Like those negative go-to scripts. Um, I'm somebody who struggles with that. Uh, my natural tendency is not to have self-love. <laughs> my natural tendency is to automatically think that, um, you know, I, I hear those, uh, just those go-to things in my mind that say, I'm not a good mom. I'm doing a bad job at this. I'm not, you know, I just have those things in my head a lot. And it's a constant thing that I'm working on improving in myself because that not only is in my head, but then I start placing that upon other people. I have like preconceived notions from people. Um, I place on them things that they haven't said, um, but that I internalize and think that they think about me. You know, like um, it's just one of those areas where I could naturally be sharing on social media all the time about how the world is out to get me and how I'm not good at this and I'm weak in this area. Like I could be saying things from that perspective all the time, but instead I share openly that that's a struggle that I have and I share how I'm constantly battling that and working on improving that area. And through that, it's connected me to a lot of people that have dealt with those same kinds of struggles. Um, I've also shared openly that recently since having kids, I've dealt with postpartum anxiety and depression. And it's again, another area where I could totally get bogged down in that and allow that to be all that I talk about. And, you know, just from that negative place um, that my mind sometimes goes to dealing with those things, that could be what's on my social media all the time. But instead, I talk about how I am working to better that area of my life and the tools that I use um, to combat that. And sharing openly and vulnerably that that's an area of weakness within myself, but that I'm growing and I'm trying to better that area is another area where people have connected with me and I think have been attracted to this team that we have here, um, being a part of what we have, this movement with Team Heart. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's the key thing, guys. You have to constantly be working on improving yourself and vulnerably and tactfully sharing that part of yourself. Um, those pieces are what attract people to you. Perfection is not attractive, right? Pure negativity, not attractive. But somebody who is honest and open about who they are and sharing how they're bettering those areas of their lives, that's attractive. That's the kind of thing that people connect to. Uh, next point here. We are different from a ton of other MLMs out there. So um, switching gears here a little bit. Attraction marketing has a lot to do with our social media, right? So a majority of us use Facebook, some of us Instagram, some of us Snapchat, some of us blog, <clears throat> some of us use Twitter, I don't know, other areas, those are the main ones I've used, <laughs> but um, a lot, I don't, I do not say this to um, bash other MLMs, that is not the, that is not the direction I want to go with this. Uh, my point is to establish a difference between many of the MLMs out there. Um, a lot of them are all about using that social media platform to blast their products out to the social media network, right? Um, some of them have people change their profile pictures, their cover photos, make like three of their posts a day about products and people's social media working for some of those MLMs becomes nothing but that. Um, other MLMs create groups on Facebook. Um, I think that's the only place you can create groups, right? Um, they'll create groups and they automatically add people to them without asking for permission. And um, 
that's just something that some MLMs do. They just add people from their entire friends list, boom, add them all into a group, talk to them all about the products. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, I support a lot of those other businesses. I'm so thankful that there are other outlets for us as moms to be able to stay home and to work our um, businesses, help our families be supported financially, get to spend more time with our kids, right? And that's incredible. But, um, you know, having those opportunities with the MLM world is wonderful. But I'm really grateful. I'm really, really, really grateful that I'm a part of this company that is more about attraction marketing versus blasting people with products or adding people to groups that they don't really want to necessarily be a part of. Um, I actually saw, and you see these things a lot, and it makes me feel bad because um, I'm a sympathizer, but I saw a post today from somebody saying, I don't want to be added to another group about this, 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 or this. I don't care about your products and just blast it. Like all of these businesses that are doing that. And it got obviously a lot of attention. That kind of post always does. Made me sad because um, I don't think we should be wasting our time, you know, putting down people that are working hard in their own way. But I am, I'm really grateful that I'm a part of Beachbody. I'm, a, I'm glad that I'm a part of business that is not invasive in that we, you know, we add people to things without asking for their permission. We aren't required to post um, products all over our Facebook pages at all times. Um, we have a business that is totally founded on sharing the journey, attracting through how this impacts our lives. And people have the opportunity then to reach out to us. Yes, we message people privately, but even through that, they have the opportunity to say no to us if they don't want to, and they'll watch us from that point forward. But um, I feel like we are more of a non-invasive approach. Um, so the way that we do this attraction marketing thing is, oh my goodness, it just caught my eye. I spelled attraction marketing wrong. <laughs> Sorry guys, marketing. <laughs> the way that we do it though, um, I, I can get behind all the way. So let's see here, next. Here we go, this is exactly what I was just talking about. Your social media is not a sales board, okay? So if you've been thinking that that's what you have to do to be successful with your business, you're off the hook. It doesn't have to become a sales board. You do not have to be salesy to be successful. And in fact, I think when you are salesy, it makes you not successful. So, because it turns people off, it really does. So your social media is a prime space to share your truth and your story, whatever that means for you. We get to personalize this. We are not cookie cutters. You don't see me posting the exact same thing that Victoria and Melissa and Brooke and Alyssa. Uh, we, we're not posting the exact same things because we aren't given from corporate, post this this week because we have these specials. You know, that's not how we do this. You have the opportunity to be creative, to be innovative, to just share your life, to share your truth, your story, whatever that looks like, and how this fits into that mold. That is how you share it. That is how you attract people to what we have to offer. Not by blasting them with buy my stuff, join my group, be a part of my team. I mean, we do things every now and then that are a little bit more blanketed, you know, uh, but really honestly, not very often. The majority of our time is spent sharing who we are so we can build trust with people and, <clears throat> and just sharing our journeys, sharing our stories with consistency on social media. Down there at the bottom, it says eye-catching, well-written, thought-provoking, engaging, value-adding, etc. cetera. Um, I want you, this is something that I do on a regular basis, like every few days, I just do a quick 
Um, did, it, let me say this first. Did you know that most people look at your profile, whatever social media platform, they look at it from their mobile device. So you always have to think about what does this look like from mobile versus when we work from our computers, right? And the majority of people will give you one, two, three. Three swipes to check out what is on your page and if they want to engage you or not. So I'm constantly going to my profile, especially on Facebook, on Instagram. On Facebook, I do that three swipe thing and just see, have I hit on through those three swipes? Can people tell the most important things about me, the things that make me me? Uh, can they tell I'm a coach too? Can they tell I have a passion for health and fitness? Can they tell that I'm a mom? Can they tell that um, I am a wife and I spend time with my family frequently? The things that are important to me, can they tell that through those three scrolls? If not, then I've got to really focus in on my posting, okay? Um, on Instagram, I go to like, you know, it shows you your grid of pictures. Uh, every few days or so, I will go on there and I'll just pull it up to the first, you know, grid picture area, look at it one time, two times, three times, and I look through it and just make sure it is what they see in those first three swipes really detail who I am. <coughs> Does it detail out my truth, my story? Does it catch people's attention that I want to catch the attention of my market audience? Um, am I attracting through those posts the kinds of people that I want to? Our posts, they have to be eye-catching, okay? And first of all, let me, let me just reach out about profiles. Your profile, you need to go take a look at it. You need to look at it, um, you know, every at least every month or so. Just kind of check in and make sure, does this describe who I am still? Um, does my, uh, my cover photo, that's what it's called, my cover photo, does it show up well when people look at it from a mobile device? Can they see what it says? Can they see what it looks like? Um, I actually made my cover photo, I redid it just about a month and a half ago because it hit me. The one that I had made on PicMonkey before, um, when people looked at it on social, on their mobile devices, they couldn't even really see what I'd put on there. So I went on and I made it a lot smaller on my computer view, but when I look at it from my phone, I can actually see most of what I wanted people to see on that cover photo. Is that eye-catching? Does it stop people and make them go, hmm, I wonder what she's about? Um, your profile picture. It needs to be a picture of you a really good picture of you and you guys you've got to be smiling <laughs> i know that sometimes people do those really serious poses but i don't know we just want to come off as more open caring kind positive right so it needs to be a smiling picture of you okay sometimes people put their pictures of their dogs cats um kids Husbands, whole family pictures. I mean, I guess if you want to put a whole family picture or a picture of you and your husband, I suppose that's okay. Um, I just really think it's important for people to see you so they get a good feel for what you look like. You know, have you ever noticed like when people comment on your stuff, if they make a profile picture change, you automatically notice it? Like you're like, oh, that's a different color or, you know, you just, you, it catches your eye. Profile pictures are really, really important. They actually leave that memory in people's, um, you know, just in their minds of who you are, what you look like. And that's just that one split second impression people have of you. So you need to make sure that your profile picture is open, welcoming, positive, <clears throat> smiling picture of you. Also, in your descriptions of you, those kinds of things. Um, Raina always says this. I think it's so important. You do not want to put your job as beach body coach. Um, not that being a beach body coach is bad. We love it, right? 
but that because we are sometimes grouped into that MLM um, category that turns people off, it just, it automatically makes people go, eh, she's going to try to sell me something just because we're grouped into that. So I don't want you to have for your job description, beach body coach. I want it to be health and fitness coach or online nutrition coach. I mean, just something that still describes what you do. Mine says online health and fitness coach. Um, I just wouldn't use the word beach body in that little, little category. You don't want to turn people off right off the bat. Um, and also in your about me sections, you know, like check your spelling, check your grammar, make sure that it's it's correct, um, your spelling right, that um, you have a professional look to your page because, I mean, honestly, like I've, I've looked at some of our team's descriptions and I've seen some misspelled words and grammatical errors and it just doesn't look professional. So you need to have that eye-catching, well-written um, look to your profile in general. And then your posts um, cannot be, uh, they can't be just posting to post. You know, like we're told to post three to five times per day, but you can't just post to post, okay? Snapchat's different. Snapchat world, you post like all day long. It's, it's like a, a glimpse into your days. I post on there all day long. And it is, like it's just little snippets on there. But your Facebook, Instagram, those really specifically need to be three to five posts only per day, and they need to be intentional, okay? So not just little snippets of your day like you do on Snapchat. They need to be thought-provoking, engaging, sharing your story, sharing about you, what's important to you, adding value to the lives of the people that are following you. If you went and looked at your profile, looked at that three swipe thing, read through some of those posts, looked at some of the pictures. Think about, take yourself into the people that you are trying to reach, your ideal market. You put yourself into their shoes looking at your stuff. Would you be interested? Or would you just think this person's trying to sell me something? It's really, really, really important. And sometimes it's hard to do. So if you need help with that, holler find a success partner on our team, find another coach on our team and say, hey, would you go do the three swipe on my profile and let me know what you think? Am I coming across earnest? Am I coming across with integrity? Am I coming across, you know, sharing who I am or am I being too beach body? <laughs> um, those kinds of things are really, really, really important when we are in the attraction marketing business, not the sales business, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, this, I believe, is my last slide, and it's something that some of you are still working on. And honestly, something that I am constantly just checking in with and making sure about myself that I know myself well enough. Um, I call it your big five, my big five, my big five. Um, when you think about yourself, you can make a list of five things that make up who you are or what is really important to you or what really interests you. What are those big five things for you? And I mean, it doesn't have to be five. Um, it could be three, it could be four, it could be five. Uh, probably not more than five because that'll get too messy and trying to share with the world. But <clears throat> making sure that in your posts, on your profile page, on your Instagram, people are seeing that bigger scope of who you are. Beachbody, health and fitness, working out, eating healthy, all of that is probably one of your big five. Sometimes we end up making that huge and it, it just engulfs who we are, at least portrayed on our Facebook, right? That is one piece of you, okay? I sure hope that there's more to you. 
And you guys, I know each of you. I know that there's more to each of you. But sometimes we get caught up in that um, trap of knowing that we have to post three to five times a day. So we're like, oh shoot, I haven't posted enough yet today. Something health and fitness. Here's my shake. Here's my workout. Here's, you know, somebody on my team. Um, I just think that we fall back on that a little too much when in reality, that one piece of you should be one of the most, um, how do I say it? One of the most strategic, okay? One of the most intentional types of posts that you do each day so that you aren't making people go, ooh, they're trying to sell me something. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, that, that's a challenging balance to walk, but uh, that is just one piece of who you are, okay? So do not let that be all that takes over on your profile. You should have those four other areas that you are sharing so that you're connecting with people on a personal level so that you are allowing them to get to know you more that you're being a little more open, you're being a little bit more vulnerable, you're allowing them to build that trust and that relationship with you so that maybe down the road when you do post an invite to a challenge group, they're more apt to consider it because they know that that is not the sole purpose of your profile, right? So it is really important if you have never done this, <clears throat> make sure that you sit down you spend some time writing out, thinking through, what are the big five things that you want to portray to your social media world about who you are? Obviously, it should be who you are and what you're made up of, so it's not that big of a deal, right? Like you just, it's something that comes natural to you to share, okay? Many of us are moms, so our kids are gonna be one of those big pieces, right? if you're willing to share that on social media. Um, that's a choice you have to make. Um, some of you are faithful people. Your faith is really important to you. That's a big one for me. So that's one of my big five. So I have my family, my kids, my husband, my health and fitness, my coaching, my faith is really important to me. <clears throat> Those are three really big things that you see often on my profile. Now, one of the other ones that's a big one for me, and this may change over time, I'm hoping it does, but another one that I share about a lot of times is that anxiety, depression, battle piece for me. So making sure that I'm sharing that vulnerable area of myself that's hard, but that I'm working on improving. That's my big four. That's the main things that I hit on, on typically a daily basis. Um, sometimes it's every few days, but I try to hit on those things every at least two days. Make sure that I have one of those four things in my posts so that I'm being well rounded in my posting. It's not just coaching. Okay. So think about that. Sit down, figure that out for yourself. And trust me when I say for some of you that are still kind of working on figuring out who am I? And this coaching journey really makes us do a lot of that. Um, it's been one of the most awesome processes for me in, you know, walking that walk of figuring out what is important to me, what truly makes up the person that I am. It's a really cool process. And this is a good opportunity for you to spend time on that. I think a lot of times as moms, um, especially after we've had kids, we lose a little bit of ourselves in them. And yes, while they make up a huge part of our lives, right, there is more to us. And we have to remember that and share that. So think about it. What makes you, you, okay? More than anything, just be yourself. Authenticity is absolutely key. Okay, I wanted to share an ex excerpt from you guys, for you guys, from my book I've been kind of telling you about, I've been reading recently, called Uninvited. I actually shared this one on our team page. It was on one of those pages I shared, but I feel like it fit well into this training about attraction marketing. <clears throat> and this ending here about being yourself, being authentically you. Um, 
uh, when we put ourselves out on social media, sometimes it's easy to think about what will make us look the best, right? Like it's hard to vulnerably put yourself out there. So sometimes I think that we're a little too like perfectly placed. And like I said earlier, perfection does not attract people. Authenticity and reality of your life being shared vulnerably, that is what attracts people. So listen to, I'm going to read you, I think I have three paragraphs here I wanted to read. Okay, I sometimes rev up my Christian to-do list with all manners of serving, blessings, and giving others the kind of love I, I am so desperate to have boomerang back on me. Those are all good things, fabulous activities, biblical instructions, but when given from a heart whose real motivation is what I'm hoping I'll get in return, it's not really love at all. That's not the answer. Giving with strings of secret expectations attached is the greatest invitation to heartbreak. That's not love. That's manipulation. And it's all so unrealistic. Only audiences are trained to applaud performances. People in everyday life can sniff out the neediness of a performer trying to earn love. Their instinct isn't to clap, but rather to be repulsed by the fakeness of it all and walk away. No soul can soar to the place of living loved when it's a performance-based endeavor. Living loved is sourced in your quiet daily surrender to the one who made you. So, of course, that, that has some ties to this whole topic of this book about living out of love in abundance, but I think that that ties very much into what we have the opportunity and the platform to do every single day as we post authentically on Facebook or on Instagram or on Snapchat. Um, that key area there said, <clears throat> only audiences are trained to applaud performances. People in everyday life can sniff out the neediness of a performer trying to earn love. Their instinct isn't to clap, but rather to be repulsed by the fakeness of it all and walk away. I don't know about you guys, but there are certain profiles that I've seen on Facebook that I've gone, oh my gosh, that's so fake. <laughs> and um, it's so true. Like we, we know what is authentic right? We know when people are being real. And that often comes from allowing yourself into a place of vulnerability, into a place of letting people see that you're not perfect, uh, letting people see that you are working on yourself because that's, that's what's attractive, right? Um, but the most important thing is to be yourself. So when you go look at other coaches' pages for inspiration, you know, that kind of thing. I got caught up in that early on in my coaching endeavor. It's easy to look at their things and go, oh, I wanted to say it. They said it so much better than I would. I'm going to copy and paste it, you know. Um, it's easy to want to do that. But the important and most key thing for us in attracting people to what we have to offer and in attracting them in trust and in integrity with what we have to offer is by living out that integrity, okay? We have to be honest. We have to be truly ourselves. We have to share our stories with that authentic piece, okay? So that's where I'm gonna leave this um, tonight. I hope that helps you to understand attraction marketing a little bit better. Um, the thing that I need you guys to know is that I see in each and every one of you, oh my gosh, a huge abundance of talent for helping so many people and for being and using this platform that we have and the following that we're building to change the world in whatever specific call ways that we've we've all 
personally received. The challenge is to set aside the fear of being real and authentic and actually do it. So I challenge you guys to do that. I challenge you guys to spend time working on those big five. I challenge you to really think about your posting, to think about what you're putting out there on a daily basis, <clears throat> not in an overthinking. I don't want this to make you overthink things. I just want you, it, this should actually make it easier to be yourself, right? No, no reservations, just be yourself, okay? All right, I think that is enough for tonight. Let me quit my screen share here. Here we go. All right, guys. Um, oh, you're still there, Court. <laughs> Let me unmute you. Do you have any questions tonight or are you feeling all right? Um, the only thing I was really curious about was uh, the diff is there a difference between just the regular Shakeology and the Shakeology HD? Oh, um, yes. Shakeology HD is home direct. That's what you're automatically put on to have that auto ship going. Okay. <clears throat> and people can sign up without that, but when they do, you don't get success club points for it. They okay. have to be on HD and it's kind of an automatic thing. So typically what I tell people is um, you have the opportunity once you've been on it for two weeks, if you decide I don't want to continue this second month, you can call and cancel that HD. But I encourage them to stay on it, um, to, to sign up with HD so that they, you know, as, as most of them are signing up as discount coaches, they get that discounted price the second month. So yeah. Yeah, but they can. There is opportunity if they want to sign up without HD. Um, it's just if there's a lot of loops you have to jump through. Okay. I'm still on the call with Christy. Yes. <laughs> Alex just heard me talking, so he was trying to figure out who I was talking to. <laughs> Do you have any other questions at this time? Are you feeling okay? Mm, I think that was it. Go ahead. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording because we're all done.